Yes, we are like Musa. La 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 Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, uh, good evening, our viewers. Um, this is uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, 11 past, uh, past nine here yeah, in the UK, which is uh, 11 past, sorry, 11 past nine, yeah, will be 11 past 10 in Nigeria. I'm sorry for coming late. Um, here is time I'm saving everything according to the reading of God for programs that we do. Uh, this is Pastor Israel Gagunduru, uh, hosting our dearly brother as Pastor Daniel for you and um, to worship God for this time. You know, the Bible says we should worship God in spirit and in truth. So sometimes worship might not necessarily mean slow songs. Worship means to serve God, which is what we are about to start right now. So, um, I will allow Pastor Dan to say one or two things as introduction before we go into prayer. Pastor Dan, please, uh, over to you, sir. Um, I want to thank God for another time out with the Lord. We believe that um, what the Lord is up to this season, he will accomplish and establish it himself. Uh, one of the things I know about the Lord is um, he never begins a thing that he has not finished. Yes. Uh, before God begins anything, he has already finished it. Mm -hmm. It's a duty of man to locate what God has finished yes, sir. and follow the footstep of the Lord as we follow him step by step. Uh, surely we are going to end exactly where God has finished. Amen. So tonight we want to appreciate you for viewing. I want to appreciate our Pastor Israel Daguduro. Appreciate God for this broadcast as the Lord is stirring up his waters uh, for him to bring forth this broadcast. We want to believe that what the Lord have in his heart, the very agenda of the Lord, the very heartbeat of the Lord, uh, uh, will be cast in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much. We appreciate God. Uh, today we uh, continue on the teaching that we started that was should be two days ago. The burden of God's ministers. That is part two. And it's going to be a short clip also like the last time. Uh, Pastor Dan, please can you give us the prayers? Yeah. Pastor Dan, please uh, prayer, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus, we 
want to thank you because you are the all knowing God. You known, you've known this time even before the foundation of the world mm. that there's going to be an orchestration and a season as such as this when that which is archived in the scriptures of fruits will be unveiled. Mm. Lord, we come under your authority tonight. We ask that by your spirit, let lines fall upon line, Amen. precept upon precept, Amen. here a little and there a little, Amen. and the formation of our Lord Jesus Christ will be complete in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for helping us. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Uh, Pastor Dan, I want to ask a question. Uh, let me read um, the verses again that we are deliberating about. That is Hebrews 5, chapter Hebrews chapter 5, from verse 1 to 3. Uh, we began on Tuesday and we're going to continue it. He said, For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way? For that he himself also is compassed with infirmities. And by reason hereof he hoards, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sin. I think that verse three going to also work on it probably today or tomorrow or the next time we meet again but today like i said it's going to be a short clip probably up to or not up to 30 minutes tonight okay uh, please pass it down please um why um that why is it that god wants every minister to have some kind of dealings of sufferings in the area of um, uh, to come to the level that you will be able to have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way. Because he said uh, that he may up, offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. And I know sacrifices is to give yourself for others. So please, can you explain why God uh, is making every minister to have uh, the kind of sufferings or dealings in the area of having compassion on these two sets kind of people? Please, can you explain, sir? Uh, I want to thank you one more time, Pastor Israel, for this privilege. Uh, actually, um, what we uh, normally call sufferings, dealings, English language that put it so. Okay. English uh, make it look scary. Mm. Uh, English language make it look uh, frightened. Okay. But the truth is suffering, dealings, they are actually what is called process. Mm -hmm. yeah. The process of making. Mm. Good. Everyone that must occupy the priestly office must go through the process of making. Mm. Good. Uh, that is actually what we call dealings of the Lord because a high priest or a priest should not have his ways. The process of collecting our ways from our hand 
is what we call sufferings or dealings. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah 55, Jesus, uh, the Lord said in the book of Isaiah, he said, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. For as the heavens are far from the earth and the east from the north, from the west, so are my ways from your ways and my thought from your thought. Uh, Pastor Dan, we lost you. It's a network problem. Please, uh, if you are following us, please help us to intercede. You're interceding also here, and you've also interceded before. Okay? Please help us with the prayers. This is very important uh, type of topic tonight. Pastor Dan, still waiting for you to come back. I uh, want to say a little click on what he just answered. Uh, let me just say a little things before he came up, before he comes back. He said, um, what English word called sufferings or dealings is actually the process of making. Um, so we have Bible terms on sufferings. Is there especially this uh, popular scripture, which is uh, uh, Philippians three terms. We make mention of sufferings, and um, so what the pastor is actually saying is that sufferings of the ordinance is the process of making. And which every one that must obtain the position of a priest must undergo, which means that God must remove you from his will. There is a will of man that must be removed. Um, so you remove the will of man from the way of God. It's going to be true process. It's not going to be uh, as what you are used to. It's not going to be as usual. It's not going to be according to what you choose, what you think, what you see, what you desire. Going to be according to his own will, his own uh, sight, his own will, and his ways. So it's not going to be according to yours. Let me see. Also, also please, we're still waiting for you. We are still waiting for you. And um, the the bottom is still the link is still on. You can still try with the same link, Pastor Daniel. We are waiting. So every priest. For every one, the Bible says how it started. He said, for every high priest taken among men is ordained for men. So everyone that is uh, being separated is uh, being separated because of the ordination of 
becoming a priest, to hold the office of a priest, to hold the office of a priest. And, um, and to hold the office, office, office of a priest is only one that has been separated. You know, the one that, that has been two topped, that can align to God, that can become one with God. And to become one with God is not going to be business as usual. It's not going to be thinking as usual. It's not going to be the same way you used to relate with your friends, your colleagues, your family members. It's not going to be like that. It's not going to be the way you used to think, the way you used to. So it's not going to be how we used to do things, how we used to make decisions. We cannot make decisions in dealing with people of God, like the kind of decision you used to do in dealing with friends and family, colleagues, praise the Lord. So that is, uh, what it means to become a priest. Uh, if you see, you go a little bit downward, uh, it said, uh, you check verse five, just to, trying to say this before pastor comes. Uh, the same Hebrews 5, verse 5. It says, so also Christ glorified not himself. You can see. He glorified not himself. Why? Because uh, what makes him to be him has been taken away from him. So he doesn't have anything that are his. He doesn't have anything that is his own thing. So he cannot glorify himself. He said, so also Christ glorified not himself to be made an what? High priest. But he that said unto him, thou hast my son. So what that scripture is saying is that, so also Christ glorified uh, his father. He glorified his father to be made an high priest. The father that said, you are my son today, I have begotten. You can see it was the father that begotten him. You can see this begotten is different from uh, the word born again. This begotten is different from being born again. So it means I can be born again, not at the same time. You are not yet uh, uh, enter into uh, the position of a becoming son you can be a born again but you have not becoming a begotten son so it means that when jesus was baptized by john the baptist 
God prepared him. So what happens to him? Because the Bible says, or let me put it like a description. After he was he, he, he answered all the Pharisees were at the age of 12 years. They answer all their questions, all of them. Then, then uh, uh, he, 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 he decided to go on a low key. So he didn't hear anything about him until the day he was baptized. So there was the, that was the time of this making. That was between 12 years and 30 years. He never heard anything about Jesus until he was, he was baptized by John the Baptist. You can see. So, say that heart, my son, today have high because in thee. And when he was baptized, Bible says, this is my begotten son in whom I am well pleased. But when he went to the wilderness for 40 days and 40 months and came back, he said, this is my son, hear him. But when he learned obedience by suffering, then the Bible says, thou art my son, today have high begotten you can see these are three uh, expression of words that came upon the begotten son. Praise the Lord. So these are, these are the processes, the heart. And if you see verse, uh, verse eight, verse six, you see, and he said on also to in another place, thou art a priest forever after the order of Mel, she did say. So to me, let's just, just normally this is not my call for tonight. This is the call of Pastor Daniel. But I don't know what happened and I'm still expecting him back going to treat this. But it's better that instead of just the waiting and waiting, we still have to just say one or two things. So let's check that verse five and verse six again. He says, so also Christ glorify not himself to be made an high priest. But he, but he glorified he that said unto him, Thou hast my son today, I have begotten thee. But in another place, he said, Thou art my, thou art a priest forever after the heart. You can see <laughs> in the place, in, in, in a verse. You see, that at my son, today I have begotten thee. So, uh, this same ego now tried to explain that expression in another way. Which means that everyone that is called a son. Everyone that is called a son, by the time you get to the position of sonship, then you have become a priest. Why? Because they've removed every, everything that uh, That made that initially made you a son that is not of God. 
everything that made you because you were all made up by the world. As in we have stature, we have ranks in the world, not in Christ. So coming to Christ, we have to start processing you, processing you bit by bit. So that they will have to change your formation and it's not going to be easy because you were already a son. You already have such a in the world. All of us. Let me give you two examples. You know the Pharisees, they have statues. They are priests in the tabernacle. They are priests. So they have statues. They are religious leaders. So to them, they serve God. You know, I, I decided to choose the Pharisees. I'm not even choosing an engineer or a businessman or an entrepreneur or a politician. These are another kind of songs of the world. I'm talking about songs that are serving God, that are priests. These are priests in the tabernacle of Moses. These are songs. Through the order of Aaron, if you check verse four. I'm sorry, my kind of person, I like to uh, I believe we are Bible students. So I may not be able to quote all scriptures. That is just my kind of person. That is how unless uh, God gave me one. And everyone, this is the way God trained everyone. And this is the way everyone uh, is being prepared for utterances. I'm just talking about myself. I don't want to take, it, take this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So the priest in the tabernacle of Moses, they followed the order of Aaron. So Aaron was a type of, of Christ, of Jesus. No, Jesus is Christ. You know? Sorry, you know, sometimes I used to, I, I like to use the word Jesus, sometimes I have to use the word Jesus, right? Because there was a process of making also from when Jesus was just Jesus to the time Jesus became the Christ. So, that's why sometimes I use Christ, and I quickly come back to saying Jesus, you should just know why I say that. I think I, I received a signal that our pastor Dan is connecting back. I think it was a network challenges or something like that, uh, which I will verify after the program. So I said, no one take this honor. Pastor Dan, please, you can still join anytime. Waiting. I'm going to stop when I see you coming. So no one take this honor unto him, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So the Pharisees in the tabernacle of Moses, they are priests. They are also, you can also call them sons. You know, sons of the shadows of, you know, shadows. You know, so let me, let me say in the time of the Pharisees, the reality was among them, but they never had the sight to see Jesus as a priest. So these are sons. The Pharisees, the teachers of the Lord, the, the Sadducees, the scribes, all of them, they are sons. They are sons. They are religious sons, worshiping and serving God according to their own uh, uh, position. They are also priests. So I'm not talking about, because let me tell you, if you also uh, finish 
in universities, world universities, you are also sons because you have stature, you have ranks, you know, you have statues, you have rank, you know. I'm talking about people who are uh, like that, but who because we have so many people who are working their 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 uh, they have their their part-time pastors. That's what I'm glad you say. They have their works, but also their pastors, their sons. Talking about people who are not even God at all. So, but I'm talking about right now uh, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, that are also priests serving God. So, but one was they came a son in the order of Meshedekit, not in the order of Aaron, in the order of Meshedekit, in the reality of Christ. Reality of God on heart. Okay, ah, sorry, Pastor Jan is joining. Sorry, like I said, we never plan to take your time. But please forgive, I think it's network for them. Pastor Jan, uh, over, over to you. I think it's connecting. It's connecting. Okay, Pastor Dan, welcome back. So, don't worry now. You see, I'm connecting. I'm connecting gradually. Okay, it's connecting now. I'm connecting now. Oh. Oh. Uh, ah, I like our fiction. I I own this show. I don't care that. Encourage. Only fans. Pastor. Pastor, we are with you. Good evening, sir. I'm already here. Yeah, I'm in the invisible realm. Ah, you have to be visible, sir. <laughs> What is wrong with the okay? Let me see. Yeah, the picture is not showing. Pastor, I think you click on your uh video. Hello. Hello, sir. Ah, we lost him. We don't lost him. We've lost the network. Okay, Pastor Dan, we're still waiting. Don't know what is happening. So, uh, the Pharisees, they are priests, and with a kind of uh, don't know, probably precept, precept curriculums, things they have to pass through to become priests, you know, physical things. They are not, uh, they never had the kind of making that Jesus had. So they became sons, they have, they know scriptures, they know laws, they know everything, they know the practices, the rituals, what to do, everything, you know, the procedures of the outer courts. Sorry, why is my computer shaking? They have everything, they know everything, they can do anything at any time. Even if you wake them up right now, they will still do things for you. Uh, but they are not the kind of songs that are God was parting. They are not the kind of songs. They never had a making of becoming a song. I mean, the priests of the tabernacle of God. 
process. So let me just stop here. Sasto, Dan, God bless you. Come back. Thank you. Welcome back. I'm so okay. sorry. I'm so okay, sorry. Sir. Okay, sir. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, man of God, I'm so sorry. No problem, sir. I didn't know my data was almost on. Oh, so yeah. the data went. Okay. Sorry. No problem, sir. <laughs> Well done, sir. Yeah. I have many persecuted Well done, sir. Yes, sir. So you can continue, well done, sir. sir. Yes, sir. I, I said something before you came. Let me just. I didn't know where I stopped. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay, I, sir. I said something before you came. I don't know. Maybe I can summarize it so that you can have some light or some inspiration in that area. I said, uh, in like in verse five and six, how, or let's say from verse four to six, how um, we have kind of songs, uh, like the that are different from the kind of songs that God begotten. You know, these are songs that are priests also in the order of Aaron, uh, and I believe this kind of song they don't have compassion for men. They don't know how to bring people that are, that are derailed. They don't know how to bring them back. They don't have compassion for men. And they have the service that is the service of the highest, you know. So, yeah, like I'm trying to say that there are kind of songs that are also priests, you know, serving to God. They are serving God. But that's different from the kind of songs that... Um, uh, God begotten in verse five and six. You know, just to relate to um, uh, chapter five, verse two, that the kind of high priest speaking among men, ordained for men things pertaining to God, which verse two say, who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way? For that he himself also is compassed with infinity. You know, somebody that knows that he himself is out senior, compassed with infinity. So today we are really dealing about a kind of priest that have compassion for men. And what, what are the things that God has made a priest to pass through for him to get to the level of having compassion for men? So uh, I think that is where what I said before you came. So. Hallelujah. Um, I, I want to thank you, Pastor Israel, for helping us. I also want to thank uh, Pastor Israel for checking on me when we went online. He quickly called to ask what's going on. Uh, I appreciate him. And Sister Florence, I appreciate you. I never knew you were watching online. Um, the issue of priesthood is actually a delicate issue yes, uh, that our generation needs to come into. Before we went off, I was talking about the process of making. making yes, sir. Uh, this is where God culture the nature of compassion in the priest. Mm. The, the nature of compassion is not a gift. Yes, sir. Compassion is not a gift. Culture it in every priest is in their process of making, mm -hmm. or what we call their dealings. You know, I was talking about dealings yes, and sir. suffering. We call it dealings and suffering, but it's actually process by which God raises a priest. Okay. Now, it is that process God nurture compassion. Now, a priest that has not been nurtured in the path of priesthood naturally will not be compassionate. Yeah. Because compassion is not a gift. Yes, sir. It's a nature. Uh -huh. It's part of how they culture, how they nurture a priest. Their making is actually inscribed in compassion. So 
um, looking at our text again, it says, who can have compassion on the ignorant? Today, we see people that they, they shine with mm. revelation. Mm. They become famous by revelation. Actually, it ought not to be so. You see, people want to outshine others with revelation. Why? Uh, because they feel others are ignorant. ignorant. Mm. That is why the revelation will not make impact on them. Mm -hmm. For revelation to make impact on the ignorant, you must know that you were once in the state of the ignorant. Mm -hmm. There is none of us that is born with light. Yes. I want to say this is so important. Mm -hmm. uh, once upon a time, Jesus was going along his missionary journey. Then he met a man that was born blind. And the disciples asked him, who commits sin? Is it this man or his parents? And Jesus said, neither mm -hmm. of them commit sin. That is a compassionate priest. Mm -hmm. A compassionate priest does not look for blame why people are in their situation. Yes, sir. But a priest that have no compassion, he will look for excuse. That the reason why they are in that situation is because of the sin they commit. Mm -hmm. Or is because of this, is because of that. That is a priest that have no compassion. But let's look at Jesus. This man was born blind. And he got to the sin. He never blamed the man for being born blind. He also did not blame his parents. That is where compassion flows from. Wow. Compassion does not excuse itself from the situation. Jesus put himself in the situation of the man, and the Bible says he had compassion on him, and miracle was done. Every one of us, we were all born blind. Please, let's take note of that. When we got born again, we were born blind. There is no believer that got born again with sight, with spiritual enlightenment. No one. We were born blind. That is why in John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see. That means when we got born again, we need to believe God for sight. For to see the kingdom of God. We were all born blind. So the ignorant man is a blind man. An ignorant man is different from a man that is out of the way. Now you have to have compassion on both of them. And listen, if you have not gone through the process as a priest, you won't have, you will not have the nature of yeah. compassion. Compassion will not be natural to you. Mm. But if you went through the process, you will know that once upon a time you were blind, you were ignorant. Also, if you went through the process, you will also know once upon a time when you found a way, you made mistake. Even after you have found a way, you were out of the way. Of the it way. was the mercy of God that kept you in the way. Mm. Now, if you have gone through that path before, Yes, if you have gone through that part before, naturally, you will be compassionate. But a man that has not gone through the process and he claims to be a priest, you will see it by his fruits, his manifestation. You will see there is no compassion. He won't be able to help the ignorant. He will lord it over the ignorant. 
-hmm. It will ride over the head of the ignorant. It won't be able to pick the ignorant from the state of blindness into the state of fullness of blessing. It won't like to do that. It will want to keep the ignorant in the state of ignorance so that it can keep shining over the ignorant and keep reigning over the ignorant. But that is not a compassionate heart. A compassionate heart, we know that I was once blind. The Lord picked me up. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was, was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. You see? He will know that I was once a blind man. Now, look at the state. I was once lost. I have been found. I was once blind. The Lord gave me sight. So, with compassion welling out of my heart, it is my duty to help this ignorant man. No matter the state, no matter what place him in that state, it may be the sin he commits. It may be the mistakes he's made. It may be circumstances of life that kept him in that state. My duty is not to judge him. My duty is not to condemn him. My duty is to see how he can come out of that state. That is a priest. That is an high priest. Now, any priest that do not have that as the bedrock in their heart, they won't be able to offer for themselves, and they will not be able to offer for the people. If you must offer for yourself and for your people, which talks about the intercessory ministry, you must have compassion for the people you are going to stand for. You want to intercede for the people, you must have compassion. You must put yourself in their state. Yes. All the problems they are. That is why before the high priest go into the most holy with the blood, the sins, he carries the burden of the whole nation to, the, to their God. That is a compassionate heart. Carries the burdens of the whole nation to God. Then, when he arrives at God, he drops the burden and carries the burden of God to the people. That is a compassionate heart. Awesome. Without that, we won't be able to save souls yes. to the uttermost. Mm. You can't save souls to the uttermost. If you are not ready to wear the shoe they are wearing, you must put yourself in their state and know that you are not a superman. You are not a superman. You should bear their infirmities. You should also feel what they feel. Then you have this compassion. By so doing, you'll be able to offer. Now, any priest that is not able to have compassion, he cannot pray well, he can intercede well, he can offer well for the people. Even to himself, he can offer well. He will go to God with pride. And anytime you go to God with pride, you won't receive answer. But when you come with humility, with the burden of the people, with the compassion that you have for them, there will always be answer in all of your offerings. Hallelujah, sir. Amen. Wow. God bless you for that. Uh, time has Thank gone. Thank you, sir. I want to see. Let me see. Okay. Uh, with okay, Pastor you want Dan, to ask a question? Yes, with Pastor Dan, we've not okay, reached 30 minutes. But because of the, okay, sir. Uh, the whole thing, 
can say. So can we still have one more question? There is a break. Yes. Okay, go ahead, sir. I have two questions. Because I'm asking okay, the Lord sir. which one to ask them. Uh, we're going to have one more series, probably next week uh, or tomorrow. I'm probably. Uh, I have two more questions. Okay, sir. For tonight. But, um, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Five seconds to know which one to ask. Uh, okay, the two yeah. questions, Abi. Yeah, uh, you can ask the first one, then the second one, sir. Okay. Uh, in, okay, let me ask. Pastor, can you tell us why? You can ask the two. Yes. Can we? Can you tell us why God caused the Pharisees, which are also the priests, the uh, are also, you know, priests are sons, you know. So, can you tell us why God called, I mean, Jesus called the Pharisees? That was that was in Luke chapter 11, from verse 38 to 44. Can you tell us why? What is different he said, between... Why did Jesus the, call the Pharisees? Yes. Why? What is different between Jesus as a priest, as a high priest, compared to those priests, you know, and you can see both of them are in the tabernacle of God. Jesus was in the tabernacle of God, you know, in the spiritual manifestation, you know, but these ones are, are in the tabernacle of uh, Moses, which is also the shadow of the uh, tabernacle of God uh, that Jesus went to. So what, what are the things that make this priest different from Jesus the priest? That make Jesus to cause them in that John. Uh, is it like was it like they don't have compassion on men? They don't or they don't have the process of making or what? Please, can you just tell us that? What can you? Okay, sir. Um, uh, to, to be to be uh, frankly, frankly speaking, all the priesthood before Christ came, they are all shadows. They are types and shadow. Mm -hmm. Moses was a priest, but he is a servant priest. All of them, there was none that was begotten as a priest. Jesus came as a priest after the order of Melchizedek he is not just a priest from God, he is a priest begotten of God. His tabernacle is not made with carnal commandment. No, Pastor, wait, Pastor, wait. His tabernacle is God Himself. Pastor, please, where minute. Jesus officiates is inside God. Okay, uh, you, you want to say something? Okay, yes. you know that Moses was also a priest, though a yes, shadow, sir. a shadow kind of priest. Yeah. Aaron also was a priest, yeah. You know, but yeah, I'm just asking why. You know, I know that those Pharisees also were priests, but though you said they were shadows, which I believe I accept that, but you know, Moses was also a priest. So what was the thing that make uh, the Pharisees different from those kind of priests, which were both uh, served as a shadow, uh, shadow uh, priests that are shadows of the reality to come? What are the things, what differentiate them to themselves? Uh, you know, there was okay, not a place um, in the Bible that about Jesus, that Jesus ever referred to Aaron or Moses, though, Let's say uh, Moses, you know, he didn't get to the promised land, but it was, Bible said there was no, there was no man on earth that is as meek as Moses. You know, he has a very good uh, uh, witnesses. So please, what are the things, just that both of them are shadows, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, what are the things that differentiate the two of them that make Jesus so cause the Pharisees, but he says good things about Moses or Aaron, please, sir. 
um, uh, um, let me start gradually so that we'll be able to um, come into it the way we want to, uh, God will permit us to come into it. Okay. Actually, those that ever walk with God from Adam, they are all priests. For example, Cain and Abel, they are priests. They came to offer unto God. Now, Cain was rejected, not because of the offering he brought, but because his tabernacle was corrupted. The difference between this priesthood, Moses, David was a priest, yes. and the Pharisees is not what the Pharisees brought to the synagogue. It's because their tabernacle was corrupted. Where they offer from is polluted. So there can be compassion in yeah. such a heart, yes. a heart that devoured the house of widow and yet come up Hallelujah. Pastor Dan, I don't know what is happening to him. We lost him again. Okay. Um, because of time, let's just uh, end it up here. Because of time, let's just end it up. Uh, by the grace of God, tomorrow. We're going to see how we can come up again. Uh, normally we want to spend 30 minutes, but this is now 57 minutes because of time. But I know that uh, you can, you've uh, been blessed with one or two things tonight. Yes. With the little you said before the network went off, to be honest with you, he has said a lot. He has said a lot of things. It's just that we need to break it down. So please uh, join us tomorrow by the grace of god or according to dealings I, I mean i don't want to promise but let's say tomorrow i believe god will have us to come up and tomorrow and so that we can we are going to uh continue from where we stop so which means that this verse this clip also is very important as the first one and it will also uh be a continuation to the third part of this uh, broadcast. God bless you. Uh, have a wonderful night rest. The body of God minister past part two continue tomorrow uh, between myself and Pastor Dan. God bless you. Good night. Remain blessed. Hallelujah.